Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Welcome to Passion, Purpose, and Possibilities. Hope everyone's doing well today. Beautiful Friday morning. 10 o'clock Mountain Time. <clears throat> How's everyone's week been doing? How's everyone been getting along this week? What's happening? What's new? I'd love to see your comments below. You know, if you're at the office, at the job site, whatever you may be doing, put a comment below. I'd love to see what you're doing. How can I help you get a great start to your weekend? How can I help you finish off the week strong? What can I help you do to <clears throat> go so strong? I'm just having a little bit of technical difficulties <clears throat> trying to get sorted out, so please bear with us for a second. So if you've been following my my posts on social media, you know I've scheduled to have a guest, Chris Miles. I'm looking forward to it. Great guy. Um, just found out that his computer needs to update. So, you know, just <clears throat> want to talk about that for a second and how you just roll with the roll with the punches. Things happen. Things come up in life. Unexpected delays, setbacks, twists of a turn of events. You know, whether that's at work or at home or vacation or whatever. So, <clears throat> so we'll just roll with it. You know, um, might need to reschedule with Chris, which would be no problem at all. Um, totally no problem. Um, We'll see if we need to reschedule. I'm chatting with them right now as we speak. So there's a, a love-hate relationship with technology. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, in the meantime, so I'll just chat a minute and you know, I'll tell you about some things that have been happening in my week. Oh, it looks like he's about to log in. Sweet. So, um, <clears throat> so I've had some, had some awesome t events happening this week, you know, um, a lot of, a lot of growth. I've been doing a lot of, uh, mentorship and, uh, Napoleon Hill stink and grow rich as well as, uh, Bob Proctor, uh, magic in your mind. I'd highly recommend studying both of those. Anyone that wants to do that, I would highly recommend that. It'd be well worth the time, well worth the money, well worth everything you put into it. 
and I would recommend you put everything into it. You know, focus on it. No, um, um, <clears throat> take it serious. Take it, take it for what it is. You know, a, a life changing mentorship program and <clears throat> learn as much as you can apply yourself as much as possible to those programs and i can tell you that it's helped me quite a bit in just the couple weeks that i've been studying um the magic in your mind and it's really helped me understand a lot better on um think and grow rich as i've been studying that you know, I've been able to really understand even more as I've developed myself with magic in your mind. So I, I just wanted to share how how that's helped me quite a bit already. And, um, you know, I'd highly recommend it. Awesome. Looks like Chris is ready to get on. We will add him. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Fantastic, Kenny. How you doing? I am doing well. Glad you were able to make it on. I know. It's funny when a computer likes to update right then. It's like, don't turn off your computer. All right, I won't. Let's <laughs> let it go. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for jumping on. I appreciate it. Um, for those that may not know you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, give a little background of who you are. Yeah, so Chris Miles, anti-financial advisor. Um, you know, owner of the company Money Ripples, just had her ninth birthday this last week. And uh, super excited to hit that nine-year-old point. Um, That's awesome. Really what we do, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, so what we do is we pretty much tell people how to get out of the rat race, right? Like, how do you get your money working for you so you don't have to work so hard for your money, right? Not about saving for retirement someday, you know, 30 or 40 years from now, but what can we do right now to be able to have that cash flow, that freedom, that prosperity, that passive income today so that your work optional, right? So you can do what you love and live that passion, right? I love it. You know, um, when whatever that passion may be, you know, having those resources to go live it, like you said, so that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, uh, we were talking beforehand and getting this all coordinated. And one of the things is, uh, how do you really monetize? You know, I'm, I'm looking at my notes over here. So, <laughs> uh -huh. How do you monetize your passion and purpose? What's your approach to that? Yeah, you know, it's it's something that I've had to play with over the last couple of decades, right? Because, I mean, I started out in the world being that traditional mainstream financial advisor, did that for four years, and and it really struggled. Like, I had a hard time trying to make money, you know? And and uh, it, it wasn't that I wasn't trying to serve people. It wasn't that I wasn't working hard. I was working dang hard. Um, but it was still like a struggle, you know? But once I started to understand that there's there's really that that law, right? That law of compensation that really says that dollars follow the value you create for other people. The more value you create for people, the more that they perceive it as being valuable, not what you think is valuable, but what they see as valuable, the more you get paid, right? And so when I started looking for win-wins, like how can I create win-wins? How can I get people what they want? Money became so much easier. It became formulaic, right? It became like very predictable. Then um, that's when I started to realize with passions and things like that, like passions won't pay your, pay your bills, you know, like you can't just sit around and, and hope and just say, hey, I'm just going to do whatever I love and money will just come rolling in. It's got to be doing what you love that others love you doing. And then the money can follow. Right. That's the big thing is that it can follow. You can still screw it up. Even if even if you're doing the right things and people love you doing it, you can still mess it up. There's still plenty of people that sabotage their success. Um, but you got to do what you love that others love you doing. And then the money will follow. And I've noticed that. The thing is, you got to combine like those gifts and talents, right? Like what are your unique abilities and not just one, you know, that, that's the problem. If people say like, well, I'm doing this one thing. It's not about the one thing. It's about the combination of talents that you have that makes you you, that makes you unique, that no one else on this planet can have. When you take those talents, then you combine it with your passions as well. You start to create some kind of magic, right? You really start to create something unique. And, it's, and it doesn't define who you are, right? I, I have to under, you know, help people understand that it's not about like, like me being the anti-financial advisor. That's not my, my purpose, right? Like that's not my purpose on this planet. You know, I'm here to serve people in a way that's unique to me. You know, so like, for example, for my unique strengths, like I'm a leader and a teacher, 
Um, I, I do, do really well at teaching things very simply, you know, making it break down for people to be able to take action steps with it. You know, um, I'm also very persistent. You know, I have this, this unique knack for just never giving up, you know, just being that steady and steady energy, that steady course, you know, and that persistence has paid off so many times, you know, um, faith, uh, I'm filled with faith, you know, like I've, I'll keep moving forward. And that's what kind of keeps that persistence going, you know, like all these things combined together, just that fact that I try to do that. And when you have fun doing it, when it's part of your passions, then what ends up happening is you actually end up accelerating those talents too. Um, I saw this first when I was doing ballroom dancing. Uh, one of the things that I learned as a ballroom dancer, I became one of the nation's top dancers, but I was not that way at all in the beginning, right? Um, when I first started dancing, I only did it because I needed a one credit class to be full time in college. And, uh, and I heard a girl telling another guy that there was tons of girls in this class. I didn't even know what class she was talking about. But just for the fact she said there's gonna be a ton of girls in the class, I joined, right? Uh, with <laughs> zero talent in my body for doing any kind of dancing, like zero, zilch, you know? Um, in fact, that first semester, I pretty much sucked. I mean, it was so bad that there was even girls that would avoid dancing with me. I was so bad. But I had fun with it, right? I started to enjoy it. And so I didn't give up. I kept persisting. Um, I took the second semester. And then during that second semester, I started to like, you know, do some extra practice and do some extra things beyond that time. And so when I did that, I did a competition and won fourth place. And I was like, wait, I could do this. And so when, when that, that passion of having fun, right, was mixing with the talent of just trying to do things over and over, like just practicing constantly and perfecting. Um, and that's one another thing I do very uniquely is I like to perfect things and just improve upon them as time goes on. Well, what ended up happening, I realized now there's confidence coming into it. And when there's confidence with that passion too, things accelerate. And so I started to get better and better at dancing. The next thing I know, I'm moving to Utah and, uh, and I end up getting on the world championship team where, you know, we won Blackpool, England a couple of years in a row. Um, and I became one of the nation's top amateur ballroom dancers, you know, again, having the right mentors, you know, you always have to keep learning, you know, having a humble attitude as I'm doing it, but just kept persisting on doing it. Again, I, had to, I didn't have the natural talent physically to be a great dancer, right? That wasn't my talent. There's guys that were way better doing it since they're four years old. But because I was able to take my own unique talents and gifts and apply that into the ballroom dancing arena, what ended up happening is that even though I started when I was 18, I was beating guys that have been dancing since they were four or five years old. You know, So that's the key is that it doesn't matter what everything else and what everybody else is doing. It's a matter of how you apply it uniquely to yourself, and make it work. And that's served me in business time and time again, where I've made millions and millions of dollars applying that same thing. I love that. And you, you pointed out a few things that I want to go back and touch on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, first off, I want to reference a, a little video you did recently about uh, your studio, your office. And oh, how yeah. you, you say you don't have a whole lot in there and stuff and that to get started, you don't need the, the biggest office and the, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me, the best microphone and all that stuff. You know, you, I'm like kind of applying it to your, your dance. You just start with where you have and then continue yeah. to develop. And as um, you noted, and as I'm sure you're still getting that mentorship and developing yourself and furthering in those ways as well. Um, and another thing that uh, it made me, as you were talking, it made me think of the saying, um, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I say that in regards because you got to, you mentioned you got to do what's valuable to them. You know, it may yeah. not, you may not see it as value to you per se, or may not be mm -hmm. as important to you. But if it's valuable to them, you know, um, <clears throat> I think I might have mumbled or messed that up in my phrasing, but I think you get <laughs> the idea of, you know, yeah. um, you bring value to them, um, you know, that, and then you'll, you'll get uh, rewarded for it, mm -hmm. you know, and something I've learned uh, quite a long time ago, and I'm still learning it and understanding it is um, money is kind of like a, a side effect of success. It comes after success. You know, success is not a um, reward of money. Yeah. And then um, finally, I like how you mentioned you signed up for that class just because the person said there were going to be a lot of girls in there. Uh -huh. you know, so you're exploring possibilities in a, a unique but um, common way for, for us guys because, you know, I've, I've been in that, oh, what, what? <laughs> I'm there kind of thing, you know, but 
taking that chance and exploring those possibilities and you go on to be um up in the nation's top and that's that's awesome i love that you you had no clue that you were going to be joining a dance class mm -hmm. exactly you know, so, so i love how you kind of covered all three of three of those words and what you just phrased there yeah, that's true i guess i did didn't i hit the three p's <laughs> <laughs> that's right um growing up you know another piece practice you know and keep doing it being persistent stuff and and in my yeah. house we took piano lessons and it was the the naughty p word because we didn't want to practice it was a bad word it was it was like a four letter word to us kind of thing <laughs> right <clears throat> but it's it's amazing how that persistence is so overlooked so often mm -hmm. you know i've tried it for three months and nothing happened or you know i fell five times and I'm not doing it again. You know, uh -huh. how often do we fall into those, those traps and stuff? And if we just all kept the time. going. Yep. All the time. You know, that's so. the thing. It, it, it requires patience. You know, there's a lot of P's in there, right? I mean, you mentioned, I mean, even trying to perfect on things, you know, trying to keep pushing along. You know? I mean, it really is. I mean, there's, there are so many things that are required for success. And I actually said this, I think it was in a, Oh, actually, yeah, I did a podcast last week. I was talking about, you know, are you really patient enough for that uh, that financial independence, right? Um, and I talked about my journey, you know, like even just nine years ago, like nine years ago, I, I ended up launching Money Ripples out of force, you know, even though I started to get it going because I had an impression I should. I mean, I was working with another company. I thought I was going to take over as the owner. And then next thing I know, the partner's like, I want you out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And it was like that, you know, and they, and they said, Hey, we are sending you a little check along the way. Cause we know it's kind of sudden. And I was like, you know what? Hey, any help you need, I'll help you out. And then I saw the check it was a thousand bucks. I'm like, I made you millions and this is your thank you. Like, okay, I'm moving forward. I'm not looking back. I got to do this. And, and I remember it was tough. Like it was really tough trying to do it on my own because, uh, you know, it was, it was nice having people around you and you weren't just in it to do it together. But then when the spotlight's on you, Right. And then you have to let your talents shine. You know, it's, it's a very different game. You know, I, I remember that first year I would go do speaking engagements, you know, especially in the women entrepreneur circle. Right. And I would do speaking engagements and I would have a coughing fit before and after I spoke, you know, and it was, it was so weird. It lasted for months, you know, and this is pre COVID of course. Right. Uh -huh. But you know, like I, I was having these coughing fits and then finally somebody had pointed out, they said, Chris, you know, a lot of times, you know, these, these kind of physical conditions aren't always physical. Sometimes they're emotionally, man, you know, manifesting in a physical way. And they said, often when someone's coughing like that, like what you're describing, it's usually because somebody's rejecting themselves. It's almost like Gollum, right? You remember the Gollum cough, that calm, calm, you know, like that, right? <laughs> that was my worst Gollum impression right there. But, you know, like it, it was that kind of thing. It was like the rejection of self. And, uh, and that's what it was like the spotlight was on me. I felt inadequate, insecure, you know, and having that spotlight on me. And, I still did it, you know, despite all that fear, but it, it took a long time for me to start to accept me for who I was rather than think I had to do some literal song and dance for people, right? Like literally trying to entertain them all the time I was speaking. Now I'm at the point, I was like, I just don't give a crap, you know, especially after I went through a divorce. Like when I went through that, like that was kind of like a rebirth for me, you know, and in 2015. And, and after that point, I was like, you know what? People can do whatever they want, say whatever they want. I'm just going to, you know, be me. And that's been the most liberating thing ever. Once I allowed myself to really come out, right? Because I had, I was using those, you know, those, my passions and I was trying to, you know, line it with my purpose, which my purpose is, is to establish higher standards of service, perseverance and stewardship to create happy, fruitful lives, right? That's my, my own mission statement that I have, you know? And yeah, I was doing that. But when you take that lid off, right? And you allow yourself to really express the fullness of who you are, it's amazing how much easier things get. And I'll tell you, like my revenue reflected it too. This is where the profits come in, came in, right? Because one, I stopped trying to just do a little everything. Um, I started narrowing down my focus, which increased profits because even if I made the same money, I was keeping more of my money because I wasn't spending it all back in my business. But then two, what happened is as I allowed myself just to be free and to be me, my, my revenue, although it was like steadily climbing, all of a sudden went like this. It just exponentially just took off from like, 2016 onward, you know, to the point where, you know, for the first time I started making seven figures in the last couple of years. Right. And, and I was like, that's incredible. Like, I can't believe that's 
even happening. You know, I remember, I remember when hundred thousand a year was pretty cool. I mean, that was, that was like, you know, 15 years ago, you know, and hitting that hundred thousand mark, I remember hitting the 200,000 mark was a big deal, you know, but then breaking over a million, it was like, this is a whole new thing. And that's when I had to eventually say, all right, I'm getting rid of the card table. You know, I'm not going to be working my desk, on my card table with my <laughs> mic and everything. You know, I'm going to now buy an actual desk and it's not even a real like fancy desk. It's like literally, I think it was a desk we bought it like, I don't know, it was Ikea or wherever it was, but you know, it was one of those that you assemble, right? Um, which, yeah, we, we did. <laughs> so assembled the desk, put it together. It was like, great. Now we're a seven figure business going on multiple seven figure business. Now let's get the desk, you know, but <laughs> you know, again, I had just live in my office, home office. I don't have like a big fancy setup or anything like that, or a huge crew of people. I hired, you know, a CMO that I, I pay six figures to, you know, as a full-time person to help me stay more part-time in my business. Like I've been and it's, it's been fun. And, and, and I'll tell you now that, that next phase for me is leveraging other people's gifts and talents and passions. It's so much more exciting to see that happen where it's not just a one person show. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, Jason, how are you doing? Jason, he, uh, in the comment of what's a gentleman, glad you're watching. Glad you're on Jason. Um, love to see any questions you might have for us. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. Um, but yeah, I I find it real interesting that you mentioned the the coughing sp spill that you had before speaking. Yeah, you know, and um, the whole mental impact that that could have um, played in that. You know, when that person said that it's it may not be physical mm -hmm. per se. I've been doing a lot of uh, speaking or not speaking. Sorry, mentorship under Bob Proctor's um, material. Yeah. And really learning that, and we can go into that for another topic, but um, it's amazing when you understand all that. But I'll be honest, I've been nervous since we scheduled this for today about <laughs> talking to you. I'm like, oh, crap. You know, it's, you know, it's I'm, I'm nervous in front of the camera still anyways. You know, mm -hmm. I, it's still that mindset. Oh, no, it's a camera. What do I do? And then <laughs> and then like, oh, crap, I'm going to live with Chris Miles tomorrow. What am I going to say? What if I mess up? What if, what if, what if, what if? And I've been nervous, basically. In a way, I still am a little nervous, you know. So it's yeah. it's a exacting point, you know, illustrating what you said about, you know, opening up and getting out of your comfort zone and not caring, you know, just mm -hmm. doing it for you as well. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm nervous still a little bit. I've already messed up a few times. And guess what? Life goes on. <laughs> At least it's not like the Chris Farley show, you know, where it's like, oh, stupid, stupid. You know, <laughs> you remember that where he's like, do you remember when you did this in the movie? Yeah, that was awesome. You know, it's not even a question, right? <laughs> just, no, you're, you're not even anywhere close to that. You know, that's that's what makes it so fun. But but I get it because like I've, I've been my in my podcast. I have the Chris Miles Money Show podcast. I've, I'm now going about to finish my seventh season. Right. Oh, nice. Um, we, we now have about 550 episodes. And uh, it's it's funny because like those early episodes, like listening to them are to me, it's like embarrassing, you know, yeah, because the sound quality was horrible. I was using, you know, I was actually like calling in to like the, the to record those podcasts. Um, I later found out after about 50 or 60 episodes that it would be better to pre-record it with better audio and sound quality. Right. And then post it versus doing it live on their platform, which sucked, you know, so hearing that and then just the awkwardness because I was still trying to figure myself out a little bit more, you know, and, and now I kind of embrace the awkwardness, you know, like I'll do some really stupid stuff and I'm like, all right, we'll just keep it in there. <laughs> you know, like just let it roll, you know, and, and have fun with it. And, and I'll tell you, there were times even like 2015, like I was going through the divorce. I felt alone because I didn't have my kids for the first time, you know, like, like they weren't around me because I was always been used to working from home. And now that my kids aren't there. And, and I remember just, you know, going and recording these episodes. I'm like, is anybody even listening to me right now? Like, does anybody even care? Yeah, and I remember thinking that. And I was actually at the point, I was like debating about quitting. And then the very next day, I went to this conference and I saw this guy like staring at me. You know, it was a little awkward, you know, because I'm like, okay, I don't think I know this guy. I don't know who is staring at me right now. And then he eventually walks on over and he's like, are you Chris Miles? Yeah. Like, oh. My wife and I, we listen to your show all the time. In fact, 
our whole network marketing team does. And in fact, our upline is this person. I'm like, oh, that's my client. They're like, yeah, we all listen to your show. We love it. Here, let me go get my wife. And then he brings her over. And then pretty soon we have like six people coming over, right? And um, and it was like, wow, you guys, like, honestly, I was thinking about quitting the show. They're like, don't, don't do it. Like, please don't. You know, even if they were, and, and I remember those days, like there's probably maybe like an average of like maybe 30, 40, 50 downloads a day. You know, it wasn't like a lot of people listening, you know, um, but that, that made a difference, you know, and, and now, I mean, flash forward, cause there's always that flywheel concept, you know, like it's just like uh -huh. pedaling a bicycle. It's hard to get it going, get out of that first gear, yeah. just like a car, right? You should get out of that first gear and get the second and third. And then pretty soon you just, it just gets easier and easier. And there's that exponential, you know, momentum that you get. And, and that's exactly what's happening with my show right now. Like now I have about a hundred thousand downloads about every three months, you know, so cause now I have about a thousand downloads a day versus maybe 30 or 40, you know, and there's a lot more people listening from all over the world and it's in the top 1% of all podcasts worldwide. And I mean, that took, I mean, we're going into our eighth year, you know, like it's, it's not like it happened overnight. And, and if there's ever a good book, if you ever feel like you're giving up, uh, I recommend a book called three feet from gold by Greg Reed and Sharon Lecter. Great book. It's kind of like the think and grow rich for the 21st century. Right. Um, but real life examples, like real people in business and other walks of life. And so many times you hear the quote in that book that says, it took me 10 years to become an overnight success, right? Yeah, I love that saying. Uh, my overnight success took me 15 years. Yeah, you know, and it's true. And I'm not saying you get tied to a number because you don't want to like subconsciously project that out. And then you do take 10 years when it could take three, right? But, uh, but like think about Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I mean, that book, I remember, you know, reading that book almost 20 years ago as a financial advisor. Like that was the recommended book. Everybody has to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a life changer. The funny thing is that book came out like six years prior, you know, it didn't, just, it just started to become a New York times bestseller right in the early two, about 2000, 2001, because he got on the Oprah Winfrey show. So all that pain and effort and work between him and Sharon trying to get that book out, it took six years before finally it took off and become a number one bestseller, right? That's, I mean, that's the kind of thing that you need to do is like, you can't give up on those passions. You can't give up on your purpose and, and your abilities to bless people's lives because, the truth is that it just gets easier and easier as time goes on, but you just have to keep moving forward and have the faith that's going to work. I love that having the faith. And um, one thing that I've, I'm really, really understanding and growing is, you know, if you, um, I think it was Jim Rohn, don't quote me on that, but said something like, if you help enough people get what they want, then you'll get what you want. You know, mm -hmm. so if, if you're, if you're doing what you love, in a serving purpose with um you know the, the right intentions then you're gonna get what you want and beyond absolutely yeah there's the, the my, my little secret formula for you know creating creating money for monetizing your what i call your divine genius right um i, I call it sparf you know um sounds kind of like you know from space balls you know oh, barf. Yeah. you know he's half <laughs> man half car. frog <laughs> yeah exactly he's his own best friend right it kind of reminds you of that. It sounds like barf, you know, but yeah, sparf is, is S P A R F. Right. Um, and I used to have it as an addition, like it used to be S plus P plus a, like an equation, but I uh -huh. actually started putting multiply effect in it now because I realized it was all a multiple. So S is for strengths, right? Taking your strengths. And we've talked about that, like finding that unique combination of strengths. And if you're not sure what they are, ask other people, like go and pull people, even whether people have known you for your whole life, or people have maybe recently met you, I guarantee they'll notice characteristics about you that just stand out. Because we always notice the talents better in other people than we do in ourselves. Because we grew up with it. We just think everybody has it. But when other people see it, they think, oh, I wish I could do that. You know, I wish I were that kind of person. So find out those things. Find out those strengths. You know, then it's multiplied by your passions. We talked about that because passions will amplify and actually increase your strengths faster, even compared to the next person. You know, because I'll tell you, like, I was always gifted at math, right? And I hated it being the top one percentile of the nation in math when I hated math. I hated doing calculus in high school. Um, by the way, that's the reason I needed a one credit class in college because I had to drop the math class because I didn't need it, you know, because I got all my college credits done in high school for math. Well, thanks to math, I did ballroom dancing, you know. Um, now for me though, math is different. Like I love the story behind the numbers. I don't like the numbers in the calculator. Even though I can just calculate stuff in my head, 
I love the story behind it. That's why I love statistics. It wasn't about the statistics class. It was about actually getting the real like story behind what, what you can, what can, what you could derive from those numbers. Right. That's why I was a sociology major. Cause I loved those, you know, doing those kind of research type things. Uh, so anyways, like that, that P will amplify it. A is action. You got to put into action, right? When that spark equation, you got to take your strengths, your passions, put it into action. How do you put into action? You do that with R, your relationships. And so the more you put into practice, the better it gets. Otherwise you end up just like burying your talents, right? You end up just burying them. They end up rotting away and they're gone. They can be gone, you know, or they will definitely devolve rather than evolve. So you want to make sure you're putting that to action. It doesn't matter if you're charging for it or not, just put it into action. Keep getting that practice. Um, you know, I'll tell you, like even the whole cash flow process I developed within my company, that happened because of the experiences I was going through. You know, all the unique crap that I had, right? I was going on. I was I went from millionaire, you know, like I was able to become financially independent in 2006, you know, when I started doing more things around investing and passive income um, versus the traditional mainstream stuff, right? And I went away from the mainstream finances and did the opposite. And that's what got me financially independent. Well, then, of course, 2008 hit. And the next thing I know, I'm in the hole 16,000 a month. Um, I'm trying to dig out of a million dollar debt hole. And uh, and I'm just too dang stubborn. So I didn't file for bankruptcy, but I still had to find a way to dig out of that hole. Right. I had to get back to at least getting paycheck to paycheck, not worse than paycheck to paycheck. I had to dig my way back out and get resourceful. Well, those, those experiences I was able to take and use that to serve people during the recession, because many people said, you know what? I would love to pay you, Chris, but honestly, I can't find, I don't have the money. I can't find it. And I knew their, their situation. I wouldn't tell them. I wouldn't say like, Hey, I'm more broke than you are. Right. That's not exactly the best way to give, inspire confidence in people. Um, but I did tell them, I said, listen, if I can help find the money in your situation, would you pay me? I said, well, yeah, of course. I like, good. And I'm thinking like, cause your situation is easier than mine here. Here's what you're going to do. You know, and I'd show them what to do. And then it free up a couple grand a month. And they're like, that's incredible. Cool. You're hired. Right. Um, and that's how I started that, that journey. That's how I started to rebuild after that period of time with no money and no credit. You know, I had to literally create money out of seemingly thin air and it was out of trying to serve people, solve problems for them, add value in ways that money was just a natural byproduct. Right. And so you got to put into action with those relationships and you know what, the more you can serve people, the better. Um, I'll give you another story. I mean, when I, when I had to launch money ripples, I had a two year non-compete. So all the relationships I had were pretty much gone because I had left it with the other company. So even though I had helped build that up, I had, I, I said, Hey, I know it's, I don't have to live. I don't have to actually obey the two year non-compete, but I'm going to do out of respect. So I went to a brand new market. What I do, I found the people that were centers of influence, you know, people that were already in that game. And I was like, Hey, I want to take you out to lunch or to breakfast or something, you know? And they're like, okay, why, what do you want from me? I'm like, I just want to get to know you and just, you know, I've heard a lot about you. I want to get to know you better. That's it. They're like, okay. And they're kind of like up with their dukes up because they're used to people trying to try to take from them. But then I'd, I would literally just, you know, talk with them, just become friends. I would hardly even talk. In fact, I would hardly even talk about business. I would try to turn the conversation back over to them a lot. Um, they would ask me and I would still answer, but I would turn it back over. Um, and then what I'd find is that either, either in their personal life or their business life, they have this, this need or something that they, that a problem they're trying to solve. So I've tried to figure out, can I one, solve the problem or two, do I know someone who can? And so I try to connect them or I try to help them with that issue. And so what ended up happening is they're saying, oh, thank you. That's awesome. And so they would start talking, right? And they start talking to each other. And the next thing I know, like people are like, I keep hearing your name everywhere. Like why? You know, even though I was the new kid on the block, right? And there was other people already in that financial space that I was in, in that same circle of influence, I was able to quickly rise to the top because of the fact that I was trying to serve people that whole time. And eventually it did take months, but eventually it started to lead to more and more money, you know? Um, and that's where it comes down to, which I had to deal with in that time I was running on, uh, I call it fumes of faith, right? That last F is faith. It's multiplied by your faith. You know, can you keep moving forward? Do you trust in principles like the principle that if you do serve people, it will pay back. Do you believe in that kind of karma, right? Do you believe that, you know, whatever you put out will come back and it's at least equal or greater measure, like as Napoleon Hill talks about, you know, when you really start to put your faith in those principles and you start to really apply them and you stay more in an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset works so much easier. You'll get through it so much faster, especially when you really envision and you see, have a very clear vision of what you want to achieve and what you're trying to 
what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I mean that, that clear vision, you know, and again, going back to that quote of you help, you help enough people get what they want. You know, mm -hmm. you, you help those people free up a couple grand and that in turn gave you some of what you wanted yeah. and taking those people out to lunch, you know, just with the, with the right intentions and stuff and you're um, not alter ulterior motives or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They, you were able to bring their fists down and uh, <laughs> a warm handshake. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. If, if you stop worrying about your own goals, you stop worrying about like your own revenue goals, you're trying to hit your income goals, and you just simply focus on, all right, how can, how can I start listening to people, right? Because if you listen to people, there's more problems in the world than ever. That's an opportunity for, for anything, you know, for, for advancement and ever opportunity for prosperity for you and everything, because you have to ask yourself, how can I uniquely help solve this problem? If I have a passion for that problem, don't solve a problem you don't, you don't care about, right? But if you really have a passion for something and you, and you even have a solution for that, find a way to share that with people and say, here, I'm trying to serve you. I want to create value for you. Um, it's just like next week, I'm launching a, a more of an online interactive training, as I call it, because there's online education, but we have also like these, these group calls that we'll do to help get people there together. Because my whole vision is to get at least 1,000 people financially independent by 2030, right? Um, now, I've already got a couple hundred people on the way there for my one-on-one -on -one clients, but it's a lot of work. And the truth is that, you know, for me to, to progress and get that kind of vision, I've got to, I got to employ other people, which is why I have other financial coaches now working for me. And we're trying to really bring that forward. And that, and that group kind of program was the thing that we're trying to launch so that we can reach more people, right? Because if you've got solutions, give it to them. And it doesn't matter. Like you can offer it. I mean, I, literally I'm offering it for like hardly nothing, hardly anything for compared to what the value they get. Right. Um, that's the thing is that it doesn't matter because I know that the money will always follow. And, uh, and especially now that I don't even need the money, you know, that would be financially independent. Anything I earn is kind of gravy anyways. Right. And so be able to truly serve people in that way. And the funny thing is I've noticed when the more, the more I became financially independent, you know, to the point where I got out of the rat race, the more people wanted to pay me anyways, because, you know, it got to the point where now I was like, Hey, I'm just doing this because it's now a passion, right? It's not because I need to make money. I don't have to survive off this, but I really want to truly help and serve people. It's amazing how many more people flocked to me at that point, you know, um, just naturally, even though I was winding down, I'd actually got to the point. I was working five hours a week in 2017. I was, you know, spending a couple months in California for the winter, you know, we're snowbirding each winter. But, you know, a few years ago, I noticed that organically, it just kept growing whether I wanted to or not, you know, especially with the podcast and everything else. You got to a point, I was like, well, either I reject people and push them away and just say, I'm not going to solve your problems or help you solve those problems. Or two, I accept it, let it come naturally and, uh, and serve people. And, and that's a decision that all of us need to make right or wrong. It doesn't matter. Um, that's totally your personal choice. But I truly believe that as you're blessed, the more you're blessed and the, with great power, as they say in Spider-Man, right? With great power comes great responsibility. You know, it's like, how do we use those resources that we've been blessed with? You know, and what are you going to do with it? And that's why I'm like, all right, cool. I can spend tens of thousands a month into trying to get that message out more in a bigger level than ever has. Even though I could just sit back and do nothing. I'm like, nope, this is the time. Now more than ever, people are having these, these problems that they want to have solved. Let's solve it. You know, we can do it in a unique way that nobody else can. Let's bring it out there. Yeah, I'm I'm a big analogy guy. So for me, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it's it's like if you go to a, a barbecue restaurant and they got the perfect brisket or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, whatever your meat of choice is. You know, you just yeah. want to, hey, come over here, check this out, take a bite. You know, <laughs> you've you've experienced that that success yep. that whatever you know now you now you want to share it with people you know it's you don't even care if you have to order another basket kind of thing yeah. whatever you know you just want to have people enjoy that with you you know mm -hmm. if you're if you're rock climbing you want to help the people that are halfway up the mountain get up to see the view that you're at yeah you know exactly and then, i see i see a lot of people in the in the, the space that i'm in they're they're kind of the uh you know, they're like philosophers, right? They have a lot of theory, but they haven't been able to make that practice work for themselves. And it's like, well, why would I listen to you if you came and make it work for your own life? Go make your life that Petri dish, right? 
make it work and be, create that experiment and then help others do the same much easier doing it that way than it is doing the others. I mean, that's why, <laughs> that's why it's kind of fun for me. And I knew that even when I was going through my hardest financial time during the recession, because it was a big ego hit, right? To be the guy that was supposed to be teach people how to get out of the rat race in 2007. Now by 2007, 2008, I'm back in the rat race. You know, I couldn't keep teaching people that I had to stay in integrity. So I stopped telling people how to get out of the rat race at that point. Um, but I knew as I was digging my way back out and helping them be resourceful because I was being resourceful. But as I was doing that, I was like, you know what? Wouldn't it be cool if I became financially independent again, a second time and doing the same things I did the first time, but just doing it better. My gaining that kind of experience, if I could prove it twice now in my own life, that'd be pretty cool. And, and I had to use that because honestly, I was depressed. <laughs> you know, I had to give myself some sort of glimmer of hope that there would be a light at the end of the tunnel because I mean, over a million dollars in debt at that time to me was like uh, just unfathomable. Like I was like, how would I ever get out of this situation? You know, and uh, I'll tell you, it was like once I was able to become financially independent again the second time in 2016, um, then I was like, you know what? I'm ready to teach people how to do this. Let's do it. You know, let's, you know, I've been able to make it work in my own life. I've seen it work in others. I've been able to help some people do it too. Let's make it work. Let's make this happen. And that's that's the kind of thing that you will want. I mean, if you have something like that, that you're like, listen, I know this works. I've proven it. My laboratory of life, use it. You know, like, you know, like you said, like, brag about that brisket all day long because that brisket is yummy. Absolutely. And you just illustrated something there that you mentioned before, because you said um, a lot of people um, have problems, but do they see them as problems or do you see it as an opportunity? You know, mm -hmm. you, you had this problem, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you were able to flip that and turn that into opportunity of, okay, I could do this, but not only can I do it, that'll give me more story, more credibility, more, um, more things to, in my arsenal to yeah. help others do the same thing because I've done it there. I, I know what it tastes like up here or what it's like up here. And, you know, so it's even, um, more important or more motivating for me to get back out of it because I've been there before. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you gotta, you just gotta keep doing it. Well, awesome. Well, Chris, I appreciate you taking the time to be here and sharing your, your experience, your wealth and your knowledge. Um, and I'm glad we were able to make it work out and the computer updated on time. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, if you don't know Chris, I'd, I'd invite you to jump on his website and get to know him. You know, it's a meet him. He's a great guy. And, um, if you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out and again, go live your passion purpose and explore those possibilities.